So normally, my favourite kind of bottleneck is enjoying a delicious glass of Prosecco with your mum at a rooftop bar somewhere in Europe, somewhere nice. But this is a tech channel after all, we should probably do something tech related. So how about GPU and CPU bottlenecking? How does it work? Well, it's actually very simple, but people tend to overcomplicate it using just a piece of paper and a couple of pens. I'm going to show you exactly how it works, how you can make the best buying decisions when building your next gaming PC. Okay, so we're going to have a small arrow across the top and a slightly longer arrow underneath. And if you add both of these arrows together, that's the performance of your PC as a whole. And we've got a solid wall here because that's our wall of performance where we're not going to be able to get it to go any faster. So if we make the shorter of the two arrows our CPU and the longer of our two arrows the GPU, we can see that the GPU is well ahead but the CPU is way behind and it's holding the system back. And you can see because of this wall that we've got here, we could upgrade our GPU as much as we want but we're not going to get any more performance because it's not the GPU that's holding us back. On the other hand, we could upgrade the CPU, make that faster, and that's going to make the entire system performance much faster. As you can see, both of these arrows added up are going to be much longer than they were to start with. This also works the other way around. So let's say you had a really fast CPU uh, and then actually a much slower GPU. And you can tell it's actually our GPU that's holding us back. It doesn't matter how much we upgrade that CPU, you're going to be hitting into that wall. So in order to get better performance from your system as a whole, you're going to have to upgrade the GPU in this case. So a bottleneck simply tells you which part of the PC is holding back from getting better performance. A CPU bottleneck means your GPU is ready to go faster, but the CPU is holding it back. But a GPU bottleneck is the other way around. The GPU is what is holding you back. A bottleneck is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a description. There's always going to be some degree of bottlenecking by definition. You can never get it perfect. One is always going to be more powerful than the other. And as you'll learn in this video, there are a few situations where in some games you might have a bottleneck and in other games you might not have a bottleneck. But don't worry, I'm going to explain it all. And this idea of bottlenecking explains why it doesn't make any sense to put your high-end i9 CPUs with a lower-end 60-class graphics card like a 4060 because simply you're wasting your money. You've got such a fast CPU that that GPU is not even going to be able to keep up. It would be equally foolish to put an i3 10100F in with an RTX 4090 because that 4090 is so much faster you're going to be held back by the CPU and not getting the full amount of performance out of that really expensive graphics card. But I said before, didn't I, that depending on the game that you're playing might actually determine whether it's your graphics card or your CPU that's holding you back. And actually it's going to be much more than that. Game settings, resolution, all these things are going to affect how much your CPU bottlenecked or how much your GPU bottlenecked. And in order to understand it properly, you need to understand what the CPU and GPU do to create the game that you're playing in front of you. But don't worry, I'm not going to go into loads of technical detail. I'm just going to give you the broad brush strokes that you need to know to understand it. So let's start with the GPU, because this is the one that people always think about with gaming, isn't it? Your GPU, think of this as a big, dumb box. It just makes things pretty. It generates the picture, adds the colours, the textures and the physics to make it look nice. But you want to think of your CPU as the brains of the operation. It decides when something appears on screen, what should be on screen depending on where your character is looking, all the AI NPCs, all the sound, all the input from your keys and clicks, all the in-game logic and rules. And so it follows, doesn't it, that some games are going to be heavier on that making it look pretty aspect, but some games it's going to be more important for you to have the up-to-date information as quickly as possible. So in short, the CPU is in charge of the structure and function of the game, and the GPU is in charge of the visuals. But how does this affect what parts you need to choose for your PC? It depends on what you're doing with the PC, especially the games, the resolution, and the quality settings. So if you're planning to play a highly competitive game, something like Fortnite, uh, Apex Legends, CSGO, something of that ilk, where you want the lowest latency, the fastest response times, the highest frame rates, and you want to be playing at low graphics settings to achieve those frame rates, then you're going to want to put a decent wedge into your CPU, even if it means a slightly lower GPU. The reason being is that, as we just described, the CPU is in charge of all your inputs, all the world around you, all that kind of stuff, and that is much more important for your competitive play than how nice everything looks. And that kind of explains why you need a really fast CPU for these esports games if you want to play them at high frame rates. But it's not just esports games that need a really good CPU. Strategy games, things like Cities, Skylines and uh, Civilization, these kind of games are very heavy on the CPU because there's lots of different tactical decisions being made, lots of rules going on in the game, 
and that's why you need a really powerful CPU for those kind of games. In general, the big sort of open world story type games, they're going to be more intensive on the GPU because a lot of what you're seeing is high graphics quality, lots of complicated textures and physics, but it's not quite as important for the game logic to be updated super quick. And the other thing you need to bear in mind, which I did mention a moment ago, is your resolution and quality settings. So the higher the resolution and the higher the quality settings, the more reliant you are on your GPU. And the lower you go on the resolution and the quality settings, the harder it's gonna be on your CPU. But if you're gonna be playing lots of different types of games or you're not quite sure, you might wanna go with something a bit more balanced rather than putting more money into one or the other. Okay, so now you understand what a CPU and a GPU bottleneck is what the CPU and GPU actually do when it comes to gaming. Now we're gonna talk about what pairings are actually a good idea, depending on the games that you're gonna play. And I have no particular affiliation to any particular parts, but I'm gonna use Ryzen CPUs and Nvidia GPUs just to make it a bit easier overall. So let's take an RTX 3050 graphics card to start with. Now this is a budget graphics card, so it doesn't make any sense to go for a really high-end CPU like a Ryzen 7800X 3D because you'll be GPU bottlenecked in most games anyway. So something like a Ryzen 5 7600 would be fine, or even something a bit cheaper. But let's take another tactic, if we were going to go for something like an RTX 4090, top of the range. This is such a powerful graphics card that you're gonna need a very fast CPU to keep up regardless of the game you're gonna play. So you want to choose basically the best CPU out there. And for most people, that's the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, at least if you're on Ryzen. But if you play strategy games, there might be some niche scenarios where you might want more cores. So you might wanna go with something like a Ryzen 9 3D processor. But to be honest, usually eight cores is fine. But where it gets really interesting and where the choices matter probably a bit more is in the mid-range, which is where most people are shopping. So let's take an RTX 4070 Super as an example of a mid-range graphics card. So what CPU to pair with this mid-range graphics card? Well, it depends on the game you're gonna be playing. So like we were saying before, if you wanna play highly competitive esports games with maximum frame rates, you wanna be playing at 1080p or maybe a bit of 1440p resolution, you really want the latency as low as possible, you want the highest frame rates, this is when you need those higher end CPUs, like in this case it would be a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. But let's say you were gonna play more open world and single player type games, well you could save quite a lot of money by going for a Ryzen 5 7600 instead, because the CPU isn't doing as much of the heavy lifting in that kind of game. And that might give you a little bit extra money in order to upgrade to the next graphics card up. You can see how this kind of thing could be quite difficult if you're a beginner, but by understanding what you actually want out of your system, that's gonna help you decide which parts you're gonna sink more of your money into. So in summary, the CPU and the GPU are both really important. It doesn't really matter what game you're gonna play, they're both really important. But where you put your money is gonna depend on the kind of game that you want to play. Highly competitive games, you're gonna want a fast CPU. You're still gonna want a good GPU, but you definitely wanna focus on a fast CPU as well. But when you're playing those open world games, you could probably go down a bit on the CPU in order to get a better GPU and get a better experience overall. We also started the video by talking about bottlenecking and how it's something that's gonna happen regardless of your system and depends on the workload that you're putting on your PC. But in general, if your CPU bottlenecked, it means that your CPU isn't keeping up with your GPU. Wouldn't matter how much you upgrade your GPU, you're not gonna get any faster because you're being held back. And you can also say vice versa for the opposite. Okay, so that's all very well and good, knowing about what bottlenecking is, parts choices, those kind of things. But how can you tell if a computer is CPU or GPU bottlenecked in gaming? Well, this is quite difficult because in my business, I don't really build any PCs that are particularly bottlenecked one way or the other. So I'm actually gonna have to borrow some clips. So you see on the readout from MSI Afterburner in the corner here, you can see that the CPU usage is pinned at 100% and the graphics card usage is way lower. It's not anywhere near 100%. This shows me that the CPU is working really hard, but the GPU isn't working very hard at all. And this is a clear case of a CPU bottleneck. The CPU is being absolutely maxed out, and obviously that's gonna be our limiting factor because the GPU isn't even working anywhere near 100%. But you might have other situations where your CPU isn't working very hard at all, but your GPU is pinned right up at 99 or 100% usage. And in that situation, you're more likely to be GPU limited or GPU bottlenecked. But those are the really obvious examples. Sometimes it would be much more subtle than that because with modern CPUs having way more cores, 
that usage might say something like 60%, but in fact, the cores that are being used for the game are all pinned at 100%, showing that it's still a CPU bottleneck, and you can see how this might be quite confusing. And there's no easy answer here. This is a game by game basis. Some games are more intensive on the CPU than others. We've talked about this already. City Skyline, Civilization, even Call of Duty Warzone is more CPU intensive. And really the only way you're gonna know whether your CPU bottleneck is to look up YouTube comparisons of different systems with different combinations of CPU and GPU so that you can work out which combination is best for you. And I'm sorry that there's not an easier way to work it out, but that's simply the reality in those edge cases. So I hope that was useful, and if it was, please leave a comment below with comments, questions, queries, etc., and subscribe to the channel as well. I'm really trying to bump the subscribers up this year. And of course, until next time, guys, I'll catch you. And I'm off to enjoy this delicious bottle of Prosecco with your mother. Okay, editor's note here, slash disclaimer. I am perfectly aware that your motherboard and to a greater extent your RAM can also be something that holds back the performance of your gaming PC. We know this very well, base speed RAM is way slower than the faster low latency RAM. But in order to keep this video digestible and understandable, I had to stick to just the CPU and GPU here. But if you're interested in hearing about things like RAM, the latency, the speed, how does that affect gaming, put a comment down below. Or equally, if you're somebody that really does understand RAM very well, help out the community by leaving a comment below as well. Anyway, editor's note over.